I'm curious to hear uh, what what's your take on uh, Peter Lowry? I'm being a Fire fan myself, I enjoyed him when he was actually playing for the Fire. But I, you know, having seen the video where he uh, came out and said he wasn't happy with the situation in Chicago, and he's happy to make a, an impact with the Timbers, I'd be uh, like I said, I'm interested to see what your take is on him. Yeah, uh, Peter's a great guy. I've gotten to speak to him a couple of times, and um, he's really the kind of guy that can that can flourish here in Portland. And as a player, uh, I think he's a fine player. And I think I'm not as familiar with the, his situation in Chicago. I don't know why he didn't get more playing time. But all of the sort of video and, and things that I've read about him indicate that he can play at that level. And, um, you know, I'm not exactly sure that he'll necessarily start right off the bat for the Timbers, but he's definitely a guy that can contribute in a lot of ways. And uh, just having a guy who has some MLS experience, a, a lot of the players that are going to be on the Timbers have very limited um, experience at the top level. And he, you know, while not being a regular starter, definitely has some time. So no, I think he's a guy that I think is a really strong presence in the locker room. I think everybody likes him, even just in the short period of time that He's been here, um, whether it's the other guys from the expansion draft or players who were here last year or, or new guys. Um, he's just always on Twitter making jokes, just <laughs> having a good time with, with the guys. And I think that's really important to have guys who are willing to be part of the team. They're not just looking to you know, come up with numbers or, or whatever. It's just really looking for a situation to feel comfortable in, feel like they're in a place where they belong, and, and then perform there are two other guys that strike me as really solid performers, at least over the years. Um, well, maybe not so much on Quavis Kirk's uh, side, but certainly Adam Moffitt uh, with the Columbus crew is a big-time mm -hmm. veteran. He's been around the block. He's been on some successful teams. It seems like he would be a real cornerstone for you guys. Yeah, he's, he actually picked up a little bit of, a, of an injury right at the beginning of training camp, and so we haven't really been able to see much of him yet with the team uh, in these uh, preseason games, but he did just play the other day or yesterday against Montreal and, and started. So, um, yeah, he's definitely a guy that people are excited about, and uh, I think he's, his profile's kind of been pushed to the back burner because uh, there have been more signings since he was picked up in the expansion draft. But, yeah, he's, you know, uh, John Spencer knew exactly who he was. They're obviously both Scottish. They had that kind of mm -hmm. connection. But, right. you know, again, like you said, he, he played, you know, for a couple of years in Columbus and, uh, and with some very good teams in Columbus. And the fact that he was available to be picked up in the expansion draft, I, I think John Spencer just jumped at that opportunity. And, and, and Eric Bruner kind of being the, the same, not, not as long at Columbus, but you know, picking both those guys up, uh, I, think, I think it was important to have players who have played together in different situations. Uh, there's a lot of these built-in connections, whether guys played together in college or they roomed together in, in other places or – play together in different teams. Um, when you have a new team and a bunch of new faces, having some built-in connections like that help. But, uh, yeah, no, Adam Moffat, I think, is going to be a really important player. I, I think one of the sort of, I don't know about weaknesses, but the areas where there are some questions is kind of in the central midfield area for the Timbers. And um, I, I think partly because we just haven't seen Adam play very much yet, I think he's going to be a solid guy, more in the defensive half of the midfield, I think. But, um, you know, guys on the wing, I think, are going to be good. Guys up in the back, guys up front. But we can have a solid presence in the middle. Uh, and and if, Ma if Moffat's one of those guys, I think that'd be fantastic. I think Brett mentioned earlier to me, too, that John Spencer's the kind of guy that knows what kind of players he wants to fit the kind of team he wants to build. And that's got to be a big plus for you guys. Definitely. I mean, he... You know, he's a guy who played in this league and has been an assistant coach in this league, has coached in the reserve league, and is now taking over the reins at, the, at sort of the top of the food chain. So I, I think that he's seen every part of the way the league is structured and knows what types of guys work in this particular league. And, uh, you know, I, I don't mean to uh, say anything bad about Vancouver, but they've kind of built their club with guys who don't have MLS experience. And that isn't necessarily bad. Right. But I think the, the way that their club has taken form um, to this point has mm -hmm. been very, very different from the way that, that John Spencer has gone about literally just picking and choosing specific guys he wants 
and uh, the plan he has in his mind sometimes confuses and frustrates us here because, you know, we'll say, well, what do you mean you're trading Dax McCarty? Uh, you know, we, we thought he was the guy that was like, the, you know, this was like the great revelation that he was mm-hmm. left unprotected and, and now we're getting rid of him. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, there's a whole process to, to this. And um, at this point, I think we're all just sort of, we all kind of have to take that on faith. Uh, that he knows what he's doing, but he he certainly seems like he knows what he's doing, and he's had success in the past. So um, we're we're crossing our fingers on that <laughs> yeah. a little bit, but um, you know he he definitely exudes a, a sense of confidence in himself, uh, in Gavin Wilkinson, the technical director, and and their plan for this team. So mm-hmm. we're happy with that. We were actually oddly, oddly mm-hmm. enough, you had mentioned the uh, center, the midfielder, midfield being your guys' weakness. Uh, or our biggest question, I guess you could say, and Dax McCarty would definitely would have brought something to the table there. So, I mean, I guess that would just emphasize how much of a big of a question mark that move really was. It, it'll be questioned um, going forward if there's no presence in the central midfield, yeah. and then Dax McCarty has a great year in D.C. Yeah. But, um, you know, those aren't necessarily givens. Uh, I mean, I've, I've, I'm sure Dax will be fine, but... It's just because he's not here doesn't mean there won't be something yeah. good happening in central yeah. midfield in, in Portland. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Well, we're actually about to talk to John Knox next about sort of their kind of roll of the die with all the Swiss guys they brought in. So it'll be interesting uh, to see what he has to say. But um, we're, we're coming to the end here. So but I did want to ask. I'm sure you've been in touch with the supporters groups. And, and what do they have planned this season? Uh, anything special at all? Uh, you know, in specifics, I don't really know. Um, I would say that, in general, what the, the Timbers Army, and, and more specifically the 107ist, which is the uh, Independent Supporters Trust, uh, basically what they're doing is facilitating everything any supporters want to do. Mm-hmm. So, uh, you know, whether it's making deals with bars around town for away game viewing, uh, or arranging, I mean, they've been doing this for years anyway, but now really ramping up efforts for buses for away game trips to all the West Coast cities um, and establishing a presence at basically every away game, whether it's the first game in Denver where we're going to have several hundred away fans uh, or anywhere. I think really it's just setting up the framework for the fan support that's been in Portland for all this time Mm. to continue doing what we've been doing and do it on a bigger and better scale. And I think people are going to be really impressed with the organization, um, not, not even just in the the stands and, and, you know, the, the, the chants and the, and all that stuff, but just the organization of the structure of the, of the group and, and how well that stuff gets done, uh, I think is a model that, that people are going to look to. So, yeah. Uh, I, you know, there, there's going to be huge TIFO, there's going to be big trips, but um, specifically, I, I don't really know, but um, people should definitely keep an eye on it. We definitely will, Michael. And, uh, of course, uh, we're hoping for full stands and, and just a, a real ruckus sort of, uh, uh, you know, atmosphere, the kind of thing we've 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 come to st- to to expect from from the northwest and i'm sure uh you guys will uh fit right in and 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 continue to bring it but i want to thank you for coming on um and uh hopefully we can talk you into coming back uh throughout the season and talking to us as things develop there uh in in portland yeah that'd be great guys thanks a lot for having me i appreciate the opportunity